But look, I'll, I'll start by asking how you both uh, came became involved with uh, Alan Partridge. Um, we just sent a script into uh, Steve's production company. Um, nothing to do with Partridge, uh, but they kind of liked our style. Um, and we kind of worked with them on various bits and bobs for a while. Um, and we just felt, felt that we had a good fit. Um, uh, Rob had to collect tokens from back, back, from the back of packets of Frosties, but uh, you know I got there on my talent. That's right, yeah. And when sort of watching Alan Parch over the course of his uh, career, you know, from the day to day over the two, course of the two series, I just wonder if you ever imagined that one day you'd be a kind of integral part of, of his sort of progression. No, not at all. Not at all. Um, we sort of came to comedy writing quite late. We didn't really. Uh, I mean, when we were watching things like the day to day in the first series of Alan Partridge. It hadn't really occurred to me to go into comedy at all. I, I thought I'd be writing for Britas from the Britas Empire, but he's, he didn't sort of survive, so... He'll be back online with Fosters. <laughs> <laughs> and it must have been quite a, a really fun challenge to come on board uh, such an established kind of brand already and think of sort of new one-liners and new scenarios to put Alan in. Yeah, it's weird, though, because sometimes you'll... Uh, 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 the writing process, typically, for the last sort of two years has been uh, Armando when he's around, but me, Neil and Steve sat in a room just sort of being Alan, so you generate... A lot of stuff and quite often you come up with something that you, that you think was really good I would or Steve would and it'd be down to Neil who's got the memory to point out that that's already been done in I'm Alan Partridge <laughs> um, but uh, no it's, it is good fun I mean we uh, a lot of time is spent telling anecdotes and talking about stuff we've seen in the news to sort of ease ourselves into the writing process Steve sort of he, he gets really sort of discombobulated if we don't have 15 minutes of just talking about nothing at the start of the day he sort of looks like a lost kid He's like, well, where's the small talk? So, yeah, it's good fun, but it's also hard work because we're all um, very anal about the detail of stuff. And yeah, there's, there's a lot less goofing around than you'd think. It's, yeah. it's very sort of quite dry, uh, geeky debate about why this word works better in a sentence than this word. Steve's got a very sort of forensic approach to the way that Alan speaks. Um, I think we're quite similar as well. So um, it becomes, yeah, it, it's, 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 there's a lot of chat that goes, on, that goes along with you know, the actual churning out of Alan material. And was it quite tough to, to take Alan and place in these kind of grander, more cinematic surroundings with the kind of hostages in a siege and yet remain faithful to the kind of tragic, intimate character that, that is within him? Yeah, we were talking about this. I think it's, what we had to do is just make sure that uh, whatever situation mm -hmm. we put him in, he, he would always focus on the small details. So um, even when he's in a life-threatening situation and he's a hostage with a, with a gun to his head. If he sees on TV that Lynn's been interviewed and she's had her hair done, that will, that will really upset him, even though he might be about to die. So Alan will always find a way, kind of like in Dog Day Afternoon, as opposed to Die Hard, it's, sort of, it's the small stuff rather than the action stuff. And, and uh, when you sort of began writing on Midmorning Matters, was the idea of a film always a possibility? Was it discussed or was it something that came a bit later on? I think um, the film had been uh, discussed for years now. I mean, when we joined uh, the team, to write Mid Morning Matters, the film was something that was kind of burbling away in the background. But um, I think it just needed, you know, diaries to align, but also a bit more, you know, momentum to be gener generated back into the character. Uh, so I think Mid Morning Matters kind of helped to breathe life back into the Partridge Corpse. brand <laughs> Corpse. Um, but uh, yeah, so that that had already already existed. I mean. Bef the, the talk of a Partridge film had been around since before I'd even become a comedy writer, so uh, I think I, it, 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 there'd been peaks and troughs in the, in the, you know, in terms of how realistic it was, in terms of how, how, whether or not it was going to happen. Um, but yeah, it, it had been there since before, certainly before we joined. I was wondering, so what sort of part did Amanda Iannucci play in the writing process? Was he, was he around? Did you kind of consult him often? Because he's such an intense yeah. part in the sort of forming of his character. Yeah, yeah, Armando is, is great. He's sort of the godfather of it. He's very much sort of the keeper of the flame. He, he, he really is very good at knowing what Alan ultimately would or wouldn't do. He, but he's also uh, Armando, so he's, got, he's very successful. He's been in the States doing Veep a lot, and he was doing the thick of it. So he, he, he was shaping the story at the start, and then me and Steve were sort of in a room for a year writing the screenplay, and, and we did the shoot, and started the edit off and then he came dropped him for the end of the edit so he was always there to sort of gently steer things you know but it's, you know he was always sort of around us like jesus christ <laughs> so what does the, the future hold for Alan? do you think now do you think he'll ever get the, that the success that he craves um i think he um he may just recalibrate his definition of success 
I don't think realistically he's going to end up with his own chat show on the BBC again. But um, I think he he may find happiness, but in a more realistic place. I mean, he's doing all right to even have a radio show, given that it wasn't that long ago that he shot a man dead live, <laughs> yeah. live on national TV. So yeah. hats off to the guy. Yeah, the people in Norfolk are very forgiving when it comes to accidental gunshot wounds. Uh, my final question, I was just wondering, uh, if there's any other character ever written in the history of the comedic creations that you could go back and write new material for, who, who would you most like to revisit? Uh, for me, it would probably be Father Ted. Um, massive, massive fan of Father Ted. I just think it's... it's, it's so rich, so many jokes, uh, such a great character to have someone who's so uh, mean-spirited, uh, but supposedly a man of God. I would love, I would love to write for George Costanza from Seinfeld. He is like my ultimate character. That sort of mix of uh, uh, insecurity, but then bursts of confidence, and then it always goes wrong, and he's insecure again. He's constantly swinging massively from one to the other. Love him. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you very Thank much. Thank you very nice much.